Kamran, how would you gauge the effectiveness of American policy vis-a-vis -vis Iran so far? Well, I think that the United States policy has basically focused on the future of Iraq. Um, Iran is the one country with which the United States is heavily engaged with in shaping the future of Iraq uh, because primarily 65% of Iraqis are Shia and those Shia have ties to Iran and Iran has tremendous influence. Therefore, whatever the United States is trying to do on the nuclear issue, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's a bargaining chip for the Iranians and it is a tool for the United States to shape or try to shape Iranian behavior. So the focus is Iraq. And therefore, I, that would explain why the United States is behaving in this way where we have a placeholder resolution uh, until they can find out. I agree with Richard that uh, we don't know what to do yet, and therefore you can't do nothing. Therefore, you have, the process, you have to keep the process moving. So you can't do nothing, so the something is the sanctions, even though they may be useless. <coughs> is, that, is that the thinking here? Because the focus is on Iraq as opposed to the nuclear issue. And, uh, I mean, if you think about it, uh, the Iranians are not yet anywhere close to developing nuclear weapons. Uh, by all estimates, uh, it will be some time before they're able to weaponize or make a device. Having a nuclear program could be as simple as having a few people sitting in a lab studying over designs and from there all the way up to the enrichment capability. We don't know where Iran is exactly given the lack of intelligence. Victoria Tomasevi, let me ask you this. Do you, do you feel that Iran, I, I, you're from Iran originally, I know you're not in you know, constant touch with Iranian leaders these days, but do you think Iranian leaders feel that they can trust the United States to keep any commitments that it might make about its future relationships with Iran or well, that kind of thing? Well, U.S. foreign policy uh, in regards to Iran has always been regime change or the politi poli politics of containment. Uh, and both of these polit policies have failed. That's the problem. And of course, there is no trust uh, between Iran and US. And it goes back all the way to like the, the US uh, coup in Iran in 1950s. So there is no trust. Uh, the, the US foreign policy in Iran is not uh, on a level that can can create a trust. Um, so what I think is important, and I agree with uh, Mr. Pearl that there is no policy right now. So the process has to be kept moving somehow. But there are alternative ways of thinking about Iran-U.S. policy, well, especially we're with the, explore those the elections. In the part. Yes, yeah, we so are going to explore those in the second there part. There is but no I, trust. I want to get a sense from Richard Pearl if he agrees that basically the administration's position today is regime change and has been for decades, which is what Victoria said. No, I don't believe it is regime change. I wish it were regime change because I think a change would uh, uh, enormously benefit the people of Iran who are not at all happy with this dictatorship. Uh, it's not regime change. If it were regime change, the administration would say so. And uh, they, they're not saying that they're for regime change. And they're not saying it because they, they are not, in fact, dedicated to removing this regime. Abraham Yazdi, you're in favor of regime change. Do you think you have an ally in this administration? Well, uh, you know, I'm surprised that Mr. Pearl says that the administration policy is a foolish one, and yet there is no suggestion what would be the logical, wise policy. As far as the regime change is concerned, uh, Americans, they have signed the uh, Algerian declaration uh, after the, before the release of the hostages. Uh, I myself and our party and the previous, uh, Mr. Ba the late Mr. Bazargan as the provisional government, we were against the hostage taking, against the occupation of the American embassy, but however, when they want to release uh, the hostages, they sign a declaration. In that declaration, Algerian declaration, the Americans, they signed that they, they committed themselves uh, that they will not intervene in Iranian affairs anymore. They have not doing it. They uh, would not do it, that one. Now they are talking of the regime change. I don't understand that one. Then one may ask, if they are not respecting their own signature, their own commitment, then why the Iranian should, uh, should trust uh, the Americans on what they are pursuing in their country? Richard Pearl, you want back in on that? Well, I'm not sure what uh, uh, Mr. Yazdi has in mind when he talks about uh, the United States violating that agreement. What have we done? What is he talking about? Well, Some the of American us have been urging that, that they would not. 
Go ahead, Mr. Yazdi. Uh, the American, they signed in the Algerian declaration that they would not intervene in Iranian internal affairs. And Mr. Pearl is saying and they haven't. What the enough. That's his position. He said they have not done it enough. I said that even what they have done it is against their commitment. Now, Mr. I'm Pearl afraid is we haven't to go after the overthrow. We haven't done it at all. There is no U.S. program uh, for intervening in uh, what you're calling Iran's internal affairs. We tried to work with the, uh, the, the Khatami government, which turned out to disappoint everyone, including most of the people who had voted for it. We are not intervening in Iran's internal affairs. I wish we were in the sense of encouraging uh, those Iranians who want to see a change from the uh, dictatorship under which they now live uh, and helping them in various ways. But we're not doing that, unfortunately. Professor Thomas Sebi wants in. Yes, so how about the $75 million uh, that was announced aid to so-called democratic movements in Iran by U.S. administration that, was, that actually created a lot of problem for genuine uh, activists who work in exactly. Iran. Exactly. Uh, so what about that? Isn't that an interference into uh, a country's internal affairs? Go ahead, Richard that Pearl. Money is, that money, uh, by and large, is being spent uh, for international broadcasting so that the people of Iran, who have no opportunity to read a free Iranian press because it's not permitted by the mullahs, can receive information from outside I Iran. Now, if that's what you regard as interference in internal affairs, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's a sort of a basic right of people to, to obtain information from wherever they wish. Kamran wants in. I'd have to agree with Richard. Um, if the United States government was indeed working on a regime change policy, it would not be $75 million. It would be a much larger budget and we'd be doing much more than just supporting through radio or through uh, other covert means uh, activism on the part of Iranian people for democracy. Uh, by the way, we're also uh, likely to be supporting uh, dissident groups like uh, the Baloch rebels and the Sunni Avazis in, uh, in Khuzestan and other dissident groups. But that's not regime change. Regime change is a coherent plan to remove a government and it has an agenda and it has a timeline. I don't think that's what the United States is doing. Well, Richard Pearl, isn't it reasonable to conclude that <laughs> the United uh, States but, government... But hang on, Mr. Yazdi, hang on one second. Isn't it reasonable to conclude All that right. the United States government has spent two to three trillion dollars in Iraq, they have lost men and material, men and women and material, uh, th there is just not enough stomach left or fight left in the belly of this White House to chew off the, the likes of a policy that you would like to see. Is that not a reasonable conclusion? Oh, I, I think that uh, conclusion is correct. What I'm really lamenting is the fact that an administration that came to power more than seven years ago did nothing for seven years uh, to encourage in perfectly acceptable ways the development of uh, a, a, an empowered opposition to the mullahs in Iran. Uh, we could have been broadcasting years ago. We could have been uh, uh, helping the Iranian people understand what is going on throughout the country because one of the ways in which dictatorships operate is to deprive people of information about their own internal situation. We've done essentially none of that and the little bit that is now being done uh, is, is really a sop to pressure from the Congress. It's half-hearted and uh, woefully inadequate. 